Hey, my name is Marcel Gosen and I'm a PhD student at Bauhaus University Weimar in Germany and I present the paper Task-Oriented Paraphrase Analytics that was written in collaboration with Matthias Hagen from Friedrich Schiller University Jena, Martin Potters of University Leipzig and Skatze AI, and Benno Stein from Bauhaus University Weimar. So there's no universally accepted definition for paraphrases, but rather a spectrum of definitions with varying degrees of semantic similarity that two texts must exhibit in order to be considered paraphrases of each other. At one end of the spectrum, paraphrases are strictly semantically equivalent, while at the other end, paraphrases cross a much lower threshold of semantic similarity. Here we see two examples of semantically equivalent and semantically similar paraphrases. The future of the nation is in your hands and the nation's future, future is in your hands are strictly semantically equivalent. This was a bland dish and I've made dishes that are much tastier than this one are not semantically equivalent but similar enough to still be considered paraphrases. These two text pairs are also examples of two different tasks, namely sentence compression and reframing. According to the definitions of these tasks, they're specializations of paraphrasing tasks. So our goal was to find all the paraphrasing tasks and arrange them in a paraphrasing task taxonomy to get a clear picture of what being a paraphrase can entail. We approached this by conducting an extensive literature research and collecting all tasks uh, that were either explicitly defined as paraphrasing tasks in the literature or align with common paraphrase definitions. These paraphrasing tasks were classified as yielding semantically equivalent or similar paraphrases. This literature review uh, revealed 25 tasks that can be considered paraphrasing tasks. Here we provide an overview of the paraphrasing task taxonomies of semantically equivalent and semantically similar paraphrasing tasks. In the following, I will go over a few selected tasks and give a definition and an example for each presented task. I begin with semantically equivalent paraphrasing tasks. The improvement of coherence is a common copy editing task in which a text is paraphrased to ease reading across sentences. Due to size limitations, the examples demonstrates a paraphrased original to achieve better text flow in a single sentence instead of across multiple sentences. Text simplification is a similar copy editing task that focuses on the readability of single sentences. When a sentence is simplified, the meaning should be preserved, which makes it a paraphrasing task. The example shows a simplified original sentence. To compress or to expand a sentence is to generate a shorter or longer sentence respectively. Therefore, the objective is to retain the semantics of the sentence while compressing it. The example here is taken from the introduction. Adversarial example generation is a data augmentation task to generate particularly hard examples for a specific task by modifying a text such that a ground truth label would be preserved but the prediction of a model would change. The example is taken from a sentiment classification task. Both the original and the paraphrased text exhibit a negative sentiment but the model predicts a positive sentiment. The meaning should be retained in this task, which makes it a paraphrasing task. An acrostic is a word or phrase that can be formed by concatenating the initial letters of each line of a text and can be used to hide messages in text. Acrostification is to paraphrase a text to encode such an acrostic. In the example, a text is rewritten to encode the acrostic hope. The goal of author obfuscation is to prevent the verification that two texts are written by the same author by altering the text style. 
The examples show an original text by Lester de Ray that has been modified by an author obfuscation system to prevent automatic author verification. Similarly, the goal of style transfer is to adjust the style of a text. In this particular case, the style of original text should be replaced to fit a specific target style. In, the, uh, in this example, a text taken from a tweet is modified to resemble a text written by Shakespeare. Next, I'll talk about paraphrasing tasks that yield semantically similar paraphrases. According to one of our earlier papers, image recaptioning is a paraphrasing task too. Image recaptioning means to assign a new image caption to fit it into a new context. In this example, we see two image captions for the image on the right from two different Wikipedia articles that are paraphrases of each other. In positive reframing, the goal is to switch a text to a, a positive perspective without distorting the underlying meaning. The example here is the one from the introduction. In argumentation literature, there is a fallacy that says repeating an argument makes it more convincing. To repeat the same argument in the same discourse is a paraphrasing task. In the example, the claim that Die Hard deserves an Oscar is repeated multiple times. The goal of textual entailment generation is to generate a text which can be inferred from another text. If the number of statements that can be inferred from both texts is high enough, this is a paraphrasing task. In the example, the paraphrase is entailed in the original. When we enter a query into a search engine, the query can be expanded or other queries are suggested that describe the same search intent. The same search intent makes query expansion a paraphrasing task. The example shows a query that was put into the search box of Google and the paraphrase represents its expansion. To find out whether the differences of paraphrases from different tasks is noticeable to a human, we conducted an experiment in which a human were given a paraphrase pair and had to label it with one of the following five tasks. The three semantically equivalent paraphrasing tasks, sentence compression, sentence simplification and style transfer, and the two semantically similar paraphrasing tasks, image recaptioning and textual entailment generation. The ground truth for examples from these tasks we took from the 10 datasets that are listed here. We sampled 50 random paraphrases per dataset having 100 to 180 characters. The correct tasks could be assigned with an F1 of 0.73. Examples from the image recaptioning and style transfer task could be labeled correctly with an accuracy of 1 and 0.94 respectively. Examples from sentence compression and sentence simplification were confused for one another more frequently than any other combination of tasks. This is because a simplified sentence is also often shorter and vice versa. To check if a machine can reach similar performance, we built an automatic classifier and repeated the experiment. For that, we sampled 50,000 task-specific paraphrases from the same 10 ground truth datasets. So we used 5,000 paraphrases per dataset. We split these 50,000 paraphrases in an 80-20 fashion into training and test data while maintaining an even distribution of examples from the five paraphrasing tasks. Since the paraphrases from different datasets were all from different topical domains, we used features that do not compare semantic representations between uh, paraphrase pairs. Instead, we used similarity features between an original and a paraphrase and syntactical feature of a paraphrase pair. We used a random forest classifier with a maximum depth of 15 to prevent overfitting. Here we can see the performance of our automatic classifier on the test set that contains a thousand random paraphrases per dataset. 
We reached an F1 of 0.81 on the test set and an F1 of 0.82 in a five-fold cross-validation. We can also see similar confusions between sentence compression and sentence simplification examples than the human experiment. Due to the high accuracy of our new paraphrasing task classifier, we can use it to analyze the inhomogeneity of commonly used paraphrase dataset. For that, we employed the MSRPC, Tapaco, PAUSE, and Wikipedia IPC datasets. Here we can see the frequencies of paraphrases that were classified to belong to one of the five considered tasks from the four datasets. We identified strong biases towards specific tasks in PAUSE, Tabaco, and Wikipedia IPC. That Wikipedia IPC contained the most image captions is not surprising since it was compiled of image captions from Wikipedia. Overall, MSRPC was the most homogeneous among the tested datasets. However, the strong biases from the three other datasets can lead to incomparable results when paraphrases from those are compared to each other in evaluation. So to sum up, we conducted an extensive literature review to construct a paraphrasing task taxonomy with 25 different tasks. We also created an automatic classifier that can assign one of five tasks to a paraphrase example. We found that both the human and the automatic classifier can classify paraphrases from different tasks effectively. We also saw that common paraphrase corpora are biased towards different paraphrasing tasks. In the future, we would like to extend the classifier to include more tasks and be able to assign multiple labels to a paraphrase pair. To further test the generalizability of our classifier, we also want to evaluate, uh, evaluate its performance on unseen task-specific paraphrases. Finally, we want to investigate if paraphrase recognition models have difficulties to recognize paraphrases from specific tasks. So that's all that I have today, so thank you for watching.